By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back at the Highlander 9394 online tournament and we have reached, yes, yes, the quarterfinals. So only eight wizards remain in this breathtaking tournament. We started with 46 brave heroes and like I said, only eight of those heroes remain and they're battling it out to reach the semifinals here in this match. And one of those wizards is... Yes, yes, yours truly, Timmy the Sorcerer. I've reached the quarterfinals. I'm facing Yoon Erik. Now, before I talk a little bit about the decks, let's first take a look at the rules of this tournament. So we have a points list. You can spend 10 points in total on cards with allocated points on them. And also, we are, of course, only playing with uh, sets printed in 93 and 94. So on the left top corner, you can see all the icons of the sets, right? So there are some restrictions. Of course, you can play with reprints in this tournament. That's no problem at all, as long as they have the same art. Um, and then when we're looking at this specific matchup, so like I said, I'm playing against Dune Eric. I am playing with a red-green deck. It's called Welcome to the Ether, and I'm taking on Yoon Erik, and he's playing uh, blue and red and a lot of really cool artifacts. You know what? Um, I want to jump into the deck text, but before I do, though, I just want to mention that, as always, you can also choose to skip, skip this section, maybe check it out afterwards. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the magic action. And in that same description below, you will also find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. That's patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. So please consider becoming a patron of the show uh, because by supporting my content, I can continue making this for you guys. So please consider becoming a patron. Uh, it already starts with just $1 a month. And for that dollar, for that support, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord server. And also, um, you get to join these online tournaments and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. But we're not there yet. We're not at the end scroll yet. As a matter of fact, we are just starting our journey here. I'm so looking forward to show you this match. But first, the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of my opponent, Yoon Erik. Let's take a look. And here we see the deck of Yoon Erik. So it's red and blue and it's called Surprises, red and blue surprises. And there are some really cool surprises in this deck. I mean, check it out. We've got Aladdin's ring. We've got Aladdin's lamp. That's so funny. And he's playing the combo power artifact with Basil Monolith. So of course he can do power monolith. You know, you can make as many mana as you want with that combo. And then you could play a fireball and kill me, but it's much more fun to combine it with your Aladdin's Ring or if you're Aladdin's Lamp. I mean, that is just hilarious. He's also playing with the Time Vault here. Is there a Twiddle? Yes, there's a Twiddle in the deck as well. So we've got that combo also. And I mean, when I'm looking at this list, I'm just seeing a lot of value cards, right? He's really going for the long game. I think in this matchup, it'll be my job to try to go faster as Yoon Erik and Yoon Erik's job to kind of slow me down, right? And make sure that he survives long enough. I think as soon as he hits like mana number four, um, you know, land number four, land number five, land number six, he starts to take over the game. He's also playing uh, with some uh, with some counter magic here. We see mana drain, counter spell, power sink. Uh, we see a boomerang and unsummon. So he can kind of, you know, stole the game a little bit. Of course, he's playing with red, so he's got access to chain lightning to Lightning Bolt. I'm also really liking the fork here. I think if you time the fork right, that can be pretty uh, pretty devastating as well. So, I mean, overall, this is looking like a very powerful list, but again, I think a list that wants to, to get me into the long game. So it's going to be up to me to just play really, really quick. But the fact that Yoon Erik has made it all the way to the quarterfinals kind of shows that he's been very successful in, you know, stalling the game and making sure that he does, doesn't die in the first few turns because I'm sure he's dealt with other aggressive decks before. So I'm I'm a little bit worried. Also, uh, maybe you've noticed he's playing a Blue Elemental Blast main, which is really good. You know, I think that's very smart because one of the best cards in these matchups are those like direct damage, red spells like this Integrating Fireball and um, Earthquake. And of course, having a counter, a solid counter for those things for just one blue mana uh, can be very, very powerful. So I'm I'm a little worried, you know, but I do think I have a chance when I'm looking at this list. I just have to go really, really fast. Talking about my list, let's take a look at my deck. Welcome to the Ether. And here we see my deck, Welcome to the Ether, and that is a reference to Tuknir Deathlock, a card that's also in this deck. Actually, the deck is built around Tuknir. Uh, my idea of, of making the deck started with this card. So this is a 2-2 flyer, a legendary creature. 
and uh, it's actually an explorer of the ether if you read the flavor text and what i really like about this is that it has like a mini giant growth on there right i can pay a green a red and a tap and then target creature gains plus two plus two until end of turn so i think that's quite sweet there are a few tricks in the deck with the, the Tuknir, for example, Dwarven Warriors, I can make a creature unblockable, then pump it later with the Tuknir, or um, I also have, for example, Tracker in the deck, so I can make it a 4-4, and then it can kill out a bigger creature, but I mean, above all, I think, you know, a 2-2 flyer that can pump another creature could be useful in this deck. When we're looking uh, at the strategy of this deck, by the way, it's really your red-green strategy, right? So it is an aggro deck uh, that wants to just wants to have the perfect curve, the first three, four turns, all I really want to do is play a creature and turn a creature sideways. Play a creature, turn a creature sideways, right? I really try to swarm my opponent by playing out all my creatures. And if the game takes longer than expected, I can always win it with an expel, right? I'm playing Fireball, Disintegrate, Dwarf and Catapult, Earthquake. Uh, I'm playing with, uh, with Hurricane. I'm playing with Detonate. So th the first goal is to start of the game, I'm going to try to deploy my creatures, like I said deal some damage and then finish it off with direct damage. Now, if that plan doesn't work, I do have a few like bigger creatures in the deck, a bit more controlling creatures like a cockatrice, like a thicket basilisk, uh, also the killer beast, which is a gr great way to sink my mana in. I'm also playing with a two headed giant. So it's not all small stuff. I'm also playing with some bigger creatures so that later in the game, I also have a chance to kind of, to kind of win and it, it's not an, an auto loss if the game takes a little bit longer. Uh, another card I really like talking about the long game is a Thelonite Druid, which is a 1-1 one, one for 1 green and 2 from Fallen Empires. And I can tap the Druid, sacrifice a creature, and then all my forests turn into 2-3 creatures, which I think is kind of cool. I think this is one of the, the stronger cards that you don't see that often, but it can really win you the game uh, out of nowhere. Now, um, maybe it's also good to kind of mention how I spent my points, so you can spend 10 points on the um, cards with points on them. And I've chosen to go for uh, Mox Emerald, Mox Ruby, and Soul Ring. So I really went for the Mana Ramp. The decision, um, I, I did that because I just wanna go really quickly. I wanna be able to just play everything out. And also I, I figured out that looking at the amount of X spells I have in my deck, the Soul Ring could be really, really good later in the game because yeah, it just adds those two points of damage to your Disintegrate or your Fireball or whatever X spell you're playing. So. I think it's kind of good. It was a tough choice though, because I think that, for example, a Library of Alexandria would have been quite good in here. And there are, there are some other choices that I could have made, but I really chose to go with uh, the uh, the mana ramping uh, kind of plan. So I thought, you know, let's just go for the two Moxen uh, and the Soul Ring. Anyway, this is uh, the deck that I'm playing with today. We talked about the deck of my opponent, and that means we're ready. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So Yoon Erik on the left with his uh, red blue deck and I'm sitting on the right with my green red deck, 100 card singleton. Looks like I've got a turn one play here, starting with a forest into a thalid. Okay, this is a one one creature from uh, Fallen Empires and every turn you can put a counter on it. You can remove three counters to make a one one Soprolling creature. So, I mean, it's got some value. Hopefully I can find, for example, a P Pendlehaven to pump it up. Ooh, look at this, a Library of Alexandria found by Yoon Erik. Oh no, that is horrible. So the Loa is gonna, gonna grant Yoon a lot of cards. It's one out of 100. Now I do have some answers to it. I'm playing Ice Storm and Stone Rain, but I mean, those are two answers in a 100 card deck. So chances are quite slim. So what I'm gonna try to do is what I wanted to do anyway, is just put as much pressure on the life total of, uh, of Yoon Erik here. So I'm playing a, a Lana Where Elves, Passing the turn, I also found a Taiga. Unfortunately, no Kurt Ape for me. So I'm uh, putting Yoon Erik here on 19 and passing the turn, I guess. And, um, you know, I think he's probably going to draw a card here on end step. We'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, this is, this is pretty devastating, right? Seeing your opponent start with the Library of Alexandria. I guess I've been lucky because I haven't seen this card yet in this tournament. Of course, you know, you only have one out of 100 and it's also uh, uh, pointed pretty heavily. So you've got to make a choice to play with it. Here we see a, a mountain here by Yoon. Are we going to see perhaps some direct damage to get rid of some of the 1-1 uh, creatures? Tapping the red. Okay, there's a Chain Lightning. I wonder what he's going to take... Uh, what he's gonna kill. I guess the Lanawa Elves seems to make uh, the most sense. Yeah, exactly. You wanna make sure I cannot play out the, the bigger creature threats. And uh, the Thalit lives, I guess. So that's pretty sweet. 
Untapping here, placing a second counter on it. Let's see what I can do. And of course, seven cards in hand for Yun. There's an attack. It's going to drop to 18. I really need something here. Perhaps Elvish Archer, Grizzly Bear, Barbary Apes. Oh man, this is really bad. Passing the turn here to Yun. I mean, this is horrible. Remember, he's drawing twice as many cards than me because of that Library of Alexandria. And I really need to just try to kill him as fast as I can. Tapping three here. Are we going to see a Tim? That would be pretty devastating. He's untapping again, probably thinking, do I really need to play a Tim right now? You know, maybe I want to take some more advantage out of the cards with the uh, Library of Alexandria. So he's going to tap two instead. Okay, he's untapping again. He is going to tap. Interesting choice. Going to keep a blue open. Okay, there's a Chaos Orb. Does he want to flip straight away? Is he going to attack my mana base here, perhaps flipping on the Taiga? That wouldn't be a bad decision, actually. And he is going to flip. If I have a Shatter, I don't. So he is going to flip. Let's see if it's a hit. And then we'll see what he's going to... What his target was. Oh, he's putting it down. He's looking at his hand again. He's, 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 he's building up a suspense. I like this, Yoon. You know you're on camera, right? There he goes. Chaos Orb goes up. And... He's flipping. I guess I... That was a hit, I guess. And he is going for the Thalid here. I kind of thought he would go for the land. I didn't really see the Chaos Orb uh, fully rotate, but that's hard sometimes to see on these, on these recordings. I remember it did. Okay, there's a Killer Beast. If this Killer Beast can stick, fingers crossed, let it please stick. I mean, I just need luck, right? I just need Jun Edic now to just draw endlessly into Lance or something, or, you know, the Aladdin's Ring or the Aladdin's Lamp that's in his deck that is just uncastable at the moment, and just hope for the best. I mean, if he draws as normal, I, 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 I'm, I'm as good as dead, you know, with that active Loa. But I just have to hope that he doesn't. I believe there's another land there being played out by, uh, by Yoon. And remember, I do have some answers, but I mean, it's a 100-card deck, right? And I have no way to, to find those answers, so I just have to find them from the top of my deck. I have to be really lucky here to, uh, to take care of that Library of Alexandria. So he's going to draw a card now with the Library. And he's going to tap an island. What are we going to see? Oh man, Reconstruction, that is so good right now. That is so good. I think Reconstruction is really decent in, in a Singleton deck, by the way. It really, it really finds its place in a Singleton deck. So playing out the Chaos Orb again, and now I really need to find my Shatter. Oh man, this is bad. There's a Maze of If. Okay, so maybe he can flip on the Maze of If. I think that's probably my reasoning here, trying to distract him. By giving him another like reasonable target. Two more points of damage here, by the way. Delta Yun Edic through my uh, Killer Bees. So Killer Bees, uh, an O1 one flyer. Originally from Legends. Uh, two green and one to cast. And for one green, you can give it plus one, plus one. So it's pretty good. But I think I'm going to lose it here to the Chaos Orb. And I mean, this reconstruction is so good uh, by Yun Edic. Drawing another card, by the way, with the uh, Loa. Gonna tap two. What are we gonna see? Oh, <laughs> copy artifact. Oh, this is disgusting. Oh my god. It's disgusting and beautiful at the same time. But for me, it's it's horrible, of course. This is a horror scenario. Remember, this is a quarterfinal match to top eight. I mean, uh, both of us have played uh, five matches at least thus far to get to this stage in the tournament. And uh, he's passing turn. He's actually gonna make me attack and pump it up first before he's gonna flip on it. Oh man, this is this is really this is really tough. So I'm gonna attack here. I'm gonna pump it up, and that also means that I've got no better thing to do. You know, I don't have anything in my hand to play out. That's horrible. So he's gonna flip here. Gonna use his copy. Let's take a look. I do like the altitude that he's keeping. We're gonna see the flip here by Yoon. Yep, that's another hit. And now we saw a clear rotation, by the way. That Killer Bees is a goner. Oh, man. 
This is so tough. I've got nothing going on here. Absolutely nothing. And he's got an active Loa. I mean, I'm pretty sure that uh, Yoon will be able to end this soon. Look at the manas he's got. Probably going to be able to play out cards like Water Elemental, Fire Elemental, you know, Sheev and Dragon. I mean, I think those are the cards that we're going to see. First, he's going to flip, probably. Or not, of course. Oh, there's a Disrupting Scepter. Oh, man. Things just keep getting worse here for me. No flip by Yoon. He's saying, you know what? I'll let you have the mana. You're going to play something out, and I'm just simply going to kill that with my Chaos Orb. So there's a red Chain Lightning, probably uh, to the dome here of Yunetic. I mean, he's got Counter Magic. Probably he's just going to take it, though. He's pretty high up still, so he's going to drop to 13. Do I have some threat to play out Barbary Apes, Grizzly Bears? Iron Claw Orcs, nothing it seems, just passing the turn here to Yoon. Oh, and now he's got six. I'm expecting him to kind of use the Scepter, draw a card probably, also use the Scepter. And that's so bad, right? He's drawing an extra card a turn, and he has that Scepter, so I have to discard a card. Magic can be so unfair. But of course, if you're Yoon, you're loving it. You're like, wow, I'm living the dream. I'm in full control. Also having that Chaos Orb that you actually don't really need. I mean, that, that, that reconstruction on the Chaos Orb, that was, that was fantastic. Being able to then play a copy over it, it's just insane. I mean, Yoon's got so many cards, that's probably why he needs time. You just to decide, what am I going to do here? I believe he's got eight in hand right now, so maybe he's got to make a choice between using the Scepter or playing something out. I also, of course, have that maze of it. So I wonder if he, if he plays a big threat. Okay, this is nice. Power Artifact on the Disrupting Scepter. Now, this is something cool. You don't see this often, meaning he can now use the Scepter just for one, I believe. So one mana and tap and force me to discard a card. That's pretty sweet. It is, it is refreshing to see somebody play a Power Artifact on another Artifact than just the Basil Monolith. Of course, the Monolith is your best option because you've got an endless amount of mana. But, you know, I do like it here. Anyway, forcing me to discard a card, discarding the Concordant Crossroads. And let's see what else I can do. Tapping three here. Hey, Dwarven Warriors. Yeah, there I go. A 1-1. One, one. And of course, you can tap it to make target creature with power two or less unblockable. Goes together quite well with the uh, Dragon Whelp that's also in my deck. But, um, you know, I mean, for you, you now think, do I want to use my Chaos Orb on this 1-1 one, one creature? Probably you don't. Playing out another island. Probably seven in hand, can use the Loa. Exactly, gonna go back up to eight. I mean, this is so devastating, right? He's gonna use his Disrupting Scepter because it's only one mana, right? I've got four cards in hand still. I mean, I'm just thinking, how can I even get close to winning this? He's still on 13 as well. I think at the start of the game, I had a little bit of an opening. Oh my God. Here we see a, a recall by Yoon Erik. So he can get some cards back here. He's going to discard two cards, it seems. And he's going to get back probably the copy artifact and the reconstruction. Could also go for the chain lightning. Yeah, it's going to go for that because that way he can, you know, copy the chaos orb. And then when he uses it, get the chaos orb back with reconstruction, play it out again. So basically he's got three chaos orb flips now. That is insane. That is insane. I have to say, you Edic, yes, I'm getting slaughtered here. But I'm liking your style, like you're trying to completely annihilate me. <laughs> just, just make sure I've got no, no like non-land permanence on the battlefield. Making sure I've got no cards anymore in my hand. Like it's, it's really devastating. They are discarding my Dwarven Catapult, kind of showing him the, the flavor combined with that Dwarven Warriors that's already on the board. Dwarven Catapult, a card from uh, Fallen Empires. And of course, we are playing with Fallen Empires here in this uh, event. There's the attack for one. Going to put Jun Edic here on 12. At least that's something. But I mean, you know, I'm not really, and I'm not really drawing any good cards. And of course, Jun Edic is drawing cards like crazy with that, with that library. So, yeah, this is just really tough for me. Okay, there's a Fireball. So I'm going to play a Fireball for two here to Jun Edic. <laughs> kind of shows how desperate I am. Putting him on 10, so at least I have this life, you know, that's the bright side. Always look at the bright side of life. 
And I mean, we're playing magic. Life is good. Yun Edic drawing for turn. So I think he's got eight in hand now. Remember, he's got a copy artifact and a reconstruction in there as well. Let's see what he's going to do. He's got a lot of mana also. So tapping two here. There's the copy artifact probably. Yep, going to copy the Chaos Orb. I mean, if he lets the Dwarven Warriors live, I guess he doesn't because he's going to use a Chaos Orb. I won't say if he lets it live and I can find a card like a Bloodlust and a Berserk, you know, I can kill him. But then again, when I play that in, in response, he can activate the Chaos Orb. So anyway, let's have a look at this flip. Oh, it's another hit. Yoon, you're really good. Oh, look at this. He's going for the lands now. Wow, so that's a new strategy changed from my non-land permanence to the lands now. So does that mean he's also going to flip this on the land? That would make sense. I guess it does, because look at my mana base. Wow, that is really dirty. So he's probably going to flip on my mountain, I think. That would be my choice, at least. Maybe on the green, because with green I can play mana dorks. I guess I still have a Birds of Paradise uh, in there. So there's another flip, another hit. He's not missing anything today. He's going to go for the forest here. So only one mountain, a Maze of If, and a Dwarven Warriors. Now we're probably going to see the reconstruction to get back exactly. Oh, <laughs> look at this. Oh, God. And of course I remember this game, you know. Like, this really hurts. Like, I remember this. But Yoon is a great guy, so that kind of helped. I have to say, like, the majority of old school players are just really cool people. So you can always have a nice chat. And it's, you know, you're like, okay, this happens. There's nothing I can do. He's probably going to use his scepter here. So there's the Chaos Orb again. Oh, he's going to flip again. Okay, wow. He kind of knows if I, if I take care of your lands, there's no way you can play anything out. And I can use his scepter next turn anyway. So that kind of makes sense, I guess. So he's going to flip again. Hey, another hit. Wow, so many flips uh, here. It's going to pass the turn. Hey, found a forest from the top. I guess that's something attacking here for one. So putting Yoon on nine. It would have been so sweet. Like, this is the moment where you need a little bit of luck, right? You need maybe that Pendle Haven to deal two damage instead of one. Maybe you need a Giant Grove. You know, just, you just need that opening. And... I know that my deck can do it, but yeah, there's just too much violence here coming from Yunitic, too much removal. But I am kind of happy with myself that I've been able to put him on nine despite all the setbacks and the pretty like lackluster draws that I've been having in this first game. I mean, look, look at Yun, you know, he's got nine mana open after tapping the Loa. It's insane. There's a Felwer Stone. Of course, he's going to use the Sceptre here, so I have to discard three cards in hand. Going to go down to two cards in hand. Oh, discarding an Urnum Jin. That's, that's really tough, you know. If the Lanawar Elves would have stuck and, you know, I would have kind of drew my lands as normal, I could have played that Urnum probably turn, turn three, you, you know, with the ramp and, and put some real pressure on. Then again, you found all those Chaos Orbs, so I would have killed it anyway. But yeah, there's the pass from Yun, so he's not playing out any creatures. Still not. And the Dwarven Warriors has done some work here, attacking again. It's a true warrior. I believe this is his uh, third point of damage. So that's pretty sweet, putting Yoon here on eight. And at least he ran out of Chaos Orbs now, I hope. Use his recall, use his reconstruction. Probably going to use his uh, Scepter again. And I'm really expecting a creature here or maybe an Aladdin's Ring. That would be pretty sweet. So he's going to tap five, it seems. What are we going to see? Ooh, there's a Fire Elemental. And then, of course, he needs to find a way to get rid of the mace or just play another big creature. Doesn't really matter that much. Going to use the Scepter first. Force me to discard. Discarding here a two-headed giant. So actually, my hand actually wasn't that bad. It's just that I have a lot of these bigger creatures and I just didn't get around to cast them because I couldn't find the mana and my mana dork got killed very quickly by Yun Edic with the Chain Lightning. That was definitely the right decision for him to take. 
He had that point where he could choose between the Thalit or the Llanowar Elves, went for the Llanowar Elves, which was the good play, the logical play, but also the logical play for a reason because it was the best option. So Yunitic again keeps drawing cards with the Library of Alexandria. That's just insane. I mean, he's on eight. But I don't have any lands. Like, if I would have had a lot of lands, I could still see some kind of situation where maybe I could kill him with an X spell, although I'm sure that his hand is full of counter magic as well. But I could have some hope, but only one green mana open. I mean, that's nothing. Okay, there's a Fisher here taking care of the mace. Probably going to swing in here exactly. Probably going to take the damage exactly. Go to 15. Hopefully, I'm able to attack him next turn with the Dwarf. But it looks like he's going to play something else. Tapping 5. What are we going to see here? Oh, there's a Fasuvan. A lovely card. So he's copying the uh, Fire Elemental. I mean, you know, getting killed by two Fire Elementals could be worse. And he's forcing me to discard. Discarding a Tracker, by the way. So I had a lot of creatures in hand, actually. I just didn't have the lands to play them out. That's pretty uh, frustrating. Passing turn into Yun Edict. So he's got two 5-4 Fire Elementals. Three cards in hand here. For me, it seems. I think Yun Edict probably still has a full grip of cards. Or maybe he's going off the Loa now and just playing out everything. Okay, there we see an Icy Manipulator. He's going to tap down my Dwarf. Oh man. Taking 10. <laughs> Going to go to five. It's going very quickly now. Oh, discarding a detonate. Oh, God. I mean, that detonate also so good. But not when you don't have any lands. I mean, I have to say, I, by looking at what I'm discarding, I actually had a pretty decent hand. It's not that bad. So passing the turn back here to Yoon. I mean, look at the amount of permanents on his side of the battlefield. Tapping down, and I'm dead. Absolutely dead. Wow, look at that. Silver Library in hand as well. Wow. I think this... I'm just going to forget this game one as fast as I can. <laughs> but I'm sure if you're Yoon Edic, you're going to watch this like a trillion times. But wow. What a, what a devastating first game for me. Hopefully, I've had all my bad luck. Now, we're going to shuffle up, and we're going to continue with game number two. Game number two, here we go. Okay, look at me go, by the way. Starting here with a Mox Ruby and a Forest. Tapping the Forest for a Scripps Sprite. So, okay, that's some pressure. Passing the turn to Yoon Edic. So let's hope that in game one, I've had all the bad luck, right, of this quarterfinals. And now I can get back into this. I need to win this. Of course, after losing the first game, Yoon Edic starting with just an island. Passing the turn. There is another land for me. Hopefully, I can cast a creature here. Second main, not playing out anything, though. That is unfortunate. There's a mountain here by Yoon. Keeping my fingers crossed here, really hoping to find something. Turn three, turning the script sprite sideways again. Yoon Edic dropping here to 18, I believe. Finding another mountain. Going to tap two, two mountains. What am I going to do? There's an Iron Claw Orc. Okay, there's some more pressure on the board. That's something. No counter magic from Yoon. I wonder what I have in hand. Oh, again, look at this. Library of Alexandria once again found by Yoon. And I believe he's got seven cards in hand, if I'm not mistaken. This is very unfortunate for me. Again, finding that Loa. This time, at least, it's not in his opening hand. That's something. And I've got some pressure on the board. Obviously, I wish I could have put some more pressure on there. Just two creatures for now. So Yoon having seven in hand here and that active uh, Library of Alexandria. Anyway, tapping a uh, red here. What am I going to do? There's a Soul Ring. So lots of mana for me. Tapping, attacking with three, putting Yoon Edic on 15. Hopefully I can do something. It looks like I'm a little bit in the tank here. Tapping, okay, playing a Pyrotechnics. So dealing four points of damage to Yoon here, putting him on 11. And I understand I needed a moment to think about this because another line of play could have been to, you know, wait until he maybe plays out a creature, kill it then. Because I can always play that later, of course. Tapping four here, so he's going to play some blockers. Okay, there we see the 3-3. Three, three. The Rock of Courageous, beautiful art. This is a problem for me, you know. Can I find some kind of pump spell? 
playing another forest, tapping two here. There's a regrowth. Okay, getting back the pyrotechnics. This is ideal. This is great. Killing the Rock of Courageous and dealing a damage to Yoon. Look at his life total. He's on 10, you know, and this is what you need to do. If your opponent has a Library of Alexandria, put as much pressure on it if you cannot get it away. You know, if you cannot get rid of it, force him to kind of start playing out his hand because he has to, to stay alive. He's on seven at the moment. Going to draw an extra card from the Loa. Can I make it here? Can I make it into a 1-1? That's the question. There's a Nevedrol's Disc, though. That is unfortunate. If I have a Detonate, that would be so good. If I have a Detonate, I can kill him. Detonate for four. Attack for three. He's on seven. Bring on the Detonate. There's the attack. There's the Berserk. So that's something. Dealing five points of damage. He's on two life. Two measly life. If I can top deck a Bolt, for example. That would be ideal. Not quite sure why I'm losing the script sprites here, by the way. Okay, he's popping the disc anyway. I mean, I'm losing the Iron Claw Orcs to the Berserk. That's correct, but the script sprite should have stayed on the board. But he's using the Nevernose disc now anyway to, uh, to kill my creatures. And now we can rebuild. And I only have one card in hand. That's a problem. I kind of went through all my firepower to try to deal as much damage as I could. I did put him on two with just a script sprites and an Iron Claw Orc. You know, so that's pretty impressive. But now, what can I do next? I just have to hope that I can find that Lightning Bolt or Chain Lightning or Hurricane or I actually have a lot of outs at the moment. Can I find them though? Okay, there's a Gasman Ogre. That's not too shabby. It's a 2-2. Two -two. Card from Arabian Nights. Ooh, there's going to be a counter spell. Oh, a mana drain on the Gasman Ogre. Have you ever seen that? <laughs> oh, only here on Timmy Talks do you have a mana drain on the Gasman Ogre. Now, that is cool. He is honored with his mana drain. But, I mean, it was important that he countered it here because he's on two, remember? So, he's very close to dying, but he's not there yet. And, I mean, he's got a control deck. He's got card advantage. It's going to be really tough for me to deal those uh, two final points of damage. Not impossible, but really difficult. Remember, I have to win this after losing that first game. And there Yoon goes, tapping five, I believe. Oh, and of course, the extra mana. Oh, there's a Mahamoti Jin. Oh, that's so rough. Putting me on a four-turn clock here. Papa Moti. Oh, this is so tough. Okay, there's a mace. That is good. That's a good top deck, I guess. A better top deck would have been Hurricane, Earthquake, Disintegrate, all that stuff. Okay. There we see an Urn and Jin, hands empty. But of course, that Urn and Jin not big enough here to get through the uh, Mahamoti Jin of Unitic. That is really tough. There is a uh, strip mine. So he's, oh, there's a strip mine. It took a moment. I'm like, oh, there's a strip mine. No, there's a strip mine. That's a problem. It's going to take care here of the uh, Maze of If. Then again, he cannot attack at the moment, right? Because he's on two. If he swings in with the Modi, I can attack and uh, kill him on the crackback. Unless, of course, he can find uh, a good creature here to play out. Ooh, he is attacking. Does it mean that he's got removal? Or he's got some kind of bigger creature threat? Tapping two red here. What is he going to do for two? Oh, I love this Jander Saddlebags. You and Edic, you the man. You the man. So he uses it to untap <laughs> the Modi. Oh, that is so funny. Doesn't even have to. Just demonstrating it, I guess. I don't know. He can do it, of course, in response to me attacking. Oh, man. And now I have to give the uh, Mahamoti Jin Forest Walk. So really hoping here to find a second creature to kind of uh, push my way through. I guess I didn't because I'm just passing to turn one card in hand. Oh man, that is that is style points, Unitic. You know, the Jander, Yander Settlebacks together with the Mahamoti Jin. That is really cool. Attacking here, so putting me on 10. So I'm on a two-turn two clock now. I mean, this is horrible. I mean, I feel like I'm so close. I just need that top deck and hope that Yoon Edic doesn't have a counter spell or some other way to survive. I just need to find a direct damage spell. He's on two people. I just need like 
Give me a hurricane or something. Something. Even a Brothers of Fire would be quite useful right now. Okay, there's a Felwer Stone. So the good news here is that Unique is not playing out more problems for me, just a Felwer Stone. There's another Forest. Is that all? Is that one card in my hand a land? Am I just keeping it there to bluff? I hope not, but I wouldn't be surprised. Oh man, I'm on 10. He's going to swing and put me on 5. That means that my next turn is my last turn to try to find something to kill Yoon Edik. If not, I'm out of the tournament. Looks like he's going to draw another card here with the Loa. He's first going to attack. Makes sense. Going to put me on 5. I really think I'm just trying to dig into my memory to try to remember what that one card is. I'm quite sure it's a land, you know. I hope not, of course, but I think it is. Oh, man, you know, and you and Edic again finding that library in game two. It's so tough to play against an active library. And you start playing different as well. You start playing a little bit rushed, you know. Now, of course, when I'm looking back at this, I'm thinking maybe I should have kept my, uh, my Berserk longer in hand. But then again, I don't think I've made any mistakes. Anyway, attacking here because it's all I can do, really. He's probably going to use his Yandra Saddlebacks here to untap the uh, Mahamoti Jin. Exactly. And now block on the Urnum. I mean, this is pure desperation mode from my side of the table. Two cards in hand here. Playing another Forest. Okay, that's great. So, I mean, I've been top decking Lance, I think, for the last three turns. It is what it is, though. I need a miracle here to uh, survive. He's going to hit me for five, and then it's going to be the end here of this, uh, of this match. What is that one card in hand? There's the attack. Gonna tap a red. What is it? No, it's another mountain. Yeah, I thought so. I thought it was a land. Oh, another mountain on the top. Oh my God, that's tough. Okay, at least the cockatrice would have been a good blocker. And some more creatures along the way. But yeah, just way too many lands for me here uh, in this uh, in the second game. And Yoon Edik, congratulations, man. You are continuing to the semifinals. How cool is that? Well done. And I'm, I'm, really, I'm really liking some of the cards in your deck. I mean, look at that living artifact. That is really cool. Aladdin's ring, Aladdin's lamp. Of course, a gender settle back together with the Mahamoti Jin. I mean, that was just beautiful. This is pure poetry. Also, you know, the Vesuvan double ganger copying the fire elemental. Beautiful, man. But I just wish you wouldn't have found those library of uh, the Library of Alexandra in both of our uh, two games. But it is what it is. You know, that's also part of old school. I came really close, put you on two, but it wasn't good enough. Congratulations, Yoon Edik. You're going to continue to the semifinals of the Highlander 93-94 tournament. And in that matchup, you are going to play against Roman, and he's also playing with a blue and red deck. Ooh, wait a minute. So are we in that stage of the tournament where kind of the top colors we're going to show, you know, what colors work best. I already kind of made the conclusion that red is probably one of the best colors, right? I, people that play Singleton already knew, knew this. This is nothing new, but also in this 100 card format, it really shows. So I guess we could consider putting some points on those fireballs and disintegrates. Uh, but yeah, blue, of course, as always, is looking quite strong as well as a, uh, a combination. And yeah, you are good stuff here by Roman. Gonna take on the you are surprises deck by Yoon Edik, and that is next week. So if you wanna find out what's gonna happen next in this event next week, uh, we will have the semi-finals for you. So if you're not a su subscriber yet, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Because then you will always be notified whenever I put a new video out so you know for sure that you're not gonna miss the semi-final mat uh, match. And of course, uh, if you'd like to see more matches, check out just the, uh, the page of Timmy Talks uh, here on YouTube. I've got over I don't know how many videos, I don't even know, but just a lot. So if you love old school, please come have a look. There are a lot of older videos that are really cool to watch as well. And before you go, please take a moment to comment, like, and share on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And then of course, there's one last thing you can do, and that is become a patron. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks, and it already starts with just a dollar a month. And for that dollar, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll.
Simba Khajiit. 